Yeah, 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 we made it. We need so to start we, uh, developing some sort of an intro here. You know, usually I just cut, and so we uh, I cut the beginning of the episode, so it starts like mid conversation. Yeah, and then, I know. And then I, I always think it's really funny how I, I just click it and it instantly starts, and there's no yeah. sort of like uh, waiting you in. It's just like a direct. Here we go. I feel like it makes people feel like, oh shit, what did I miss? And it's like it's like frantic, so you're stuck. It makes me, yeah, it makes me feel really. Uh, I, I probably spike like 15 blood pressure points whenever we uh, start in. I, I had to listen to a bunch of our own episodes today. I think I probably did like nine hours of listening to my own podcast at work today to try and get the listening hours up so that we can do the YouTube. Uh, what is it? The, the, the like YouTube members. Watch hours. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. Wait, so if I have your podcast out in the background, I'm helping you get your hours up so you can Yes, do yeah, on ironically. If we get 4,000 hours, actually not if when we get 4,000 hours, it's just we can we can start having um channel memberships cuz we have all the other criteria. <laughs> okay. It's not that many hours like No, no, it's not. It's just doubling our current it's a little bit more than doubling our current amount of watch hours. Yeah. Okay, so if and it's also really easy friends, with uh we can, we can make it. Yeah, we, exactly. Yeah. And it's really easy with podcasts, too, because, like, if you were thinking about, like, uh, trying to make any other type of content that's, like, visually engaging that keeps people on it for, like, 4,000 <laughs> hours, that's actually kind of difficult. Like, even a 15-minute yeah. video, I don't know, dude, the Zoomers are going to click off by, like, 3 minutes and 50 seconds. Or less. But uh, with a podcast, people just kind of put it on in the background and let it rip. Mm-hmm. So, we, yeah, we're cheating the algo. Yeah. Wait, do Zoomers even listen to podcasts? No, not really. That's a okay, good point. So, I don't know. Maybe, so, it's, maybe, it's, maybe it's millennials showing my age here. Millennials and like, actually, it's just us. Millennial, or just me, I guess. I'm the old fuck. We're speaking to the 25, 24 plus crowd. Yeah, well, I think our well, our they don't differentiate in the analytics, but it's basically eighteen to thirty four who listens. But uh, they have that okay. that big of a demographic breakdown. Yeah, it's like eighteen to thirty four, and then thirty four to fifty. Those are like the two sections. It's like that's, that's useless. That's like yeah, useless. That's awful. What the hell? <laughs> I'm I would sure. have thought that like data giant Google would do a little bit better. Like I would think that they would have like month by month. They could know, if, if they, this was a if they thirty-one to... year old, thirty-one year old who turned in January type. I bet you if I, pay, I'm sure, uh, I know Google themselves have that information, but us, of course, we get right. That's the crazy thing is you know that they one hundred percent have the ability, and they just decided to like chunk it like this arbitrarily, just as like a uh, like a fuck you. So I guess, and it's like, oh yeah, your graph shows that uh, eighteen to fifty is like the most important, <laughs> the biggest yeah. watch demographic. Yeah, no fucking shit, bozo. Is there a way to pay for it, like so that you can know more information if you pay? Because maybe that's why they hide it. I'm sure that's... if you pay for like Google Analytics specifically, maybe. maybe I don't know. YouTube. I don't. Does Does Google Analytics apply to YouTube? Um, I think so. I would hope so. Um, I've used Google Analytics for work before and it's like incredibly complicated to use. It almost seems like something you need a professional to use. And then shortly after you buy it, they give you a sales phone call like a week later and it's someone who basically is like, oh, what questions do you have? And then you ask a bunch of questions and then they get off the phone and they put you on hold for 20 minutes. And then when they get back on the phone, they're like, okay, well, we can answer exactly zero of your questions unless you pay for like a membership with us where we, we guide you through the process. That's peak rift. I like that. Yeah, it is. They're good at grifting for sure. Hell yeah. I'm sorry. I can't actually answer your question. I need you to pay more. <laughs> and they made me wait for 20 minutes. So I'm like into like this in, in, in anticipa- uh, wait, anticipation. Anticipation. Yeah, you got cucked is what happened. Yeah, <laughs> I, and I have an anticipation that I get back on the phone. They're like, sorry, you have to pay us. It's over. I, it's like the... Uh... The classic IQ test, the free IQ tests from like 2004 where you like finish the whole thing. You get to the end after like 45 minutes of filling out questions and they're like, okay, just click this button, <laughs> pay us nine ninety five, and we'll email you your results. <laughs> like, oh, uh, fuck. Got fucking wrecked. Yeah, that's good. I like that business model. We should start doing that. We should start yeah. somehow find a way to do that for ourselves. Dude, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm feeling really good about the future here after I installed TikTok and I started scrolling in my algorithm. Everyone was telling me it's just going to show me a bunch of girls. And so what started off happening was it was entirely black improv comedians. And then after I scrolled for a little while, it started showing me like exclusively like uh, gentle masculinity videos and <laughs> tree care workers. So what like, did fuck? you see this recent thing that I posted? And you, you can't did, listen yeah. now, but uh, it's this arm wrestling video with this like really touching background music. 
where this guy is like this guy is like totally uh like dominating this other guy while arm wrestling and he's like giving him tips he's like okay like rotate your forearm out this way press down with your outer fingers like this lean your body and stand up yeah good good and then he just like slowly crushes him after he's shown him all the tips and he's like yeah excellent excellent a little gentle masculinity i like that yeah it looks it looks really uh I mean, I don't know, like, when, when you contrast it with the fact that everybody else is out here saying, like, oh, yeah, like, my TikTok shows me, like, hot girls, and I get, like, muscular men, like, holding hands with another guy, like, <laughs> looking eyes, or locking eyes with him, like, making eye contact as he, like, dominates him, like. Yeah, I think saw it that. Says, I was huh? watching that video, and I was just like, why is there so much gentle music in the background? <laughs> I fucked up. I cut it like a half second too early because you can't finish hear him saying uh, excellent at the end and it really like breaks me out of it. But yeah, you know. the Chinese seem to know you really well, Lucas. They got you. <laughs> they got you pegged. They know exactly what you're about. I did a lot of scrolling today. I probably spent two hours just scrolling TikTok and telling it what I didn't want to see ever again. Yeah, yeah. That's it was, it was basically every time I ever saw a woman trying to explain something to me, it was just like. Yeah, that's how you. Yeah, that's how you got to where you are. That's smart. Right, like, you want to do. You want to show me this. Anymore. You want to cut the women out early of your uh, your algorithm. Well, uh, no, that's not even true. I want I want women who are talking to other women. Like, I want to see women who are talking about like beauty care stuff because I want to understand what's going on there. But like, mm-hmm. I don't need I don't need women like giving me dating advice, right? Like, oh yeah, no, I don't like that either. It's just like I have I have the girlfriend. I'm. I'm fine. I don't need to be uh, instructed by some like 110 IQ girl who thinks that you need to like flowers or something. I've actually never seen a video where women explain to men how to date women on TikTok. I can't say huh. that. Really? I get that a lot, unfortunately. Really? It's really Just, annoying. I get like dating gurus from like 34-year-old women, 38-year-old women. I get, women. I get a lot of women dating gurus too who are like older women who are married. But they're talking to women. They're not. They're not talking to. Men. Yeah, that's what I want. I want like the older, like Machiavellian, uh, like the the sort of old crones trying to pass on their wisdom and yeah, their like there's sneaky a lot tactics. Of them. And they have they have a lot of followers too. Every time I go on TikTok and I like think I'm clouded or whatever on Twitter, and then I go on TikTok and I look and see how many like followers random thirty eight year old dating gurus have. It's like mm-hmm. fifty thousand, one hundred fifty thousand, three hundred k. It's very yeah. crazy. You can get no, the yeah, follower counts on TikTok are really nutty. That's yeah, the only nuts, reason yeah. you need to start making content because it just seems like fifty k on TikTok is like not even right. Real. Like that's <laughs> it doesn't like, mean that, yeah. I think I think that's like top like tenth percentile for like Zoomers. Yeah, it's it's. I know several people with that much. It's just kind of like the ten k of Twitter. You don't yeah. think it's top tenth percentile? I'm exactly yeah, yeah. a little. No, bit, I think it's, it's actually like, not that high. I don't think it's. I don't think it's like um. It's definitely not top five percent at all. I mean, I think in terms list. of total accounts made, it's definitely top five percent. But total, like, yeah. I like I I just don't. You know, it's it's relatively lower. Is all I'm saying. The I'm problem, trying to figure out like a conversion factor for uh, like what Twitter follower count is like equivalent to like a uh, TikTok follower count. Oh, actually, I have an idea because of the um, crypto Twitter people, like. People with like 50k Twitter followers have like a half million to a million followers on TikTok. What? No. Like Marin specifically. No, Marin. No, like think about Marin. Marin, like the the astrology chick. She has like two million TikTok followers and like 60k, maybe 70k now. Uh, Twitter followers. It might be more now. I don't know, but that's where it was. Like last time I checked. But do you and think so, that's just because of the her demographic that like most of the people who watch her are like young women and they're on TikTok instead of Twitter? No, it's actually the crypto dudes made her account blow up because oh. she got canceled by the astrology people. Um, oh. she, yeah, they got mad at her for courting. So she started doing her whole thing is like she started doing um astrology, astrology and, based chart reading stuff, right? Yeah, and then she decided to use the chart reading on Bitcoin, and then when she did that a couple times because those account those blew up, and then we put them on Twitter and whatever all of her like lefty astrology people started like sending her death threats and shit. And she like was like, okay, uh, I have to leave this space. Cause they like, were actually like, you're a fucking fascist now da da da. So she moved into crypto space. And then that's when she like really blew up is when she started doing like chart readings of like Bitcoin and the market and stuff. 
Interesting. And, um, yeah. That's so always like, that was always kind of weird to me because like I see uh I see the market and price action and all of that stuff as kind of like a black box that can't be touched by any of this like esoteric uh you know like i don't think prayer impacts market prices i think it's literally like a situation where uh god will spit on you if you ever attempt to use some sort of like energetic manipulation on the market he will mm-hmm. cause you to become like raped and broke <laughs> she's the well the thing is like because of crypto is all like it's all retail it ends up just being like a map of human behavior so i if you believe the uh, the premise that astrology is like kind of like a macro view of human behavior, it does kind of make sense that uh, you know a okay. full moon. Actually, so not only Mercury is in retrograde, so... yeah, so it's gonna fuck with people's behavior. And we do know yeah. for a fact, and this has been confirmed multiple times um, the by Bitcoin studies. Bitcoin moon chart out trades. Yeah, holding. but it's, yeah. it's not just Bitcoin. It's like every market, the full moon cycle affects it, and it's like demonstrable. So yeah, Marie, good. I don't know if you know about this, but the basic gist of it is like, uh, what, what is it? Every full moon and then every new moon. Yeah, switches. every full moon. Yeah. So I forget which is peaker. which, but it, it, it switches depending on if it's a bull or bear market. So it, it it does switch, but it's always a peak or a min, a min there. So the idea basically is that you buy the asset when the moon hits one, and then you sell it when the moon hits the other. And if you do this, like every market outperforms just holding that asset. Interesting. Yeah. Is that because, true? Like, yeah, it's true. Yeah, data? it's consistently yeah, like this, true. This, yeah. is, this can be like, uh, I don't know what what's the term. Uh, like, you you can you can run this Automatic. back on all price action, and it's always true for whatever reason. Wow, mm-hmm. that's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. It doesn't surprise me at all. I expect yeah. there to be like a lot more weird stuff like that, but I don't know. Yeah, weirdly. Yeah, once I start, once I accepted the moon thing, I was like, all right, fuck it. You could be astrology crypto chick. I don't care. I feel I like that. I feel like it's possible that like the type of people who are interested in astrology and the type of people who are interested in the market don't. don't oh yeah, like, no, it's like that much. So she must have like a good. I don't know. She must have like a good like a good kind of. Niche well, it's also it's thing. also the type of thing where like they don't necessarily even have to be interested in it because like astrologers and especially female astrologers like maybe they're selling chart readings but a lot of it is kind of like they're selling like the asmr girlfriend experience yeah and what crypto people really like is the asmr girlfriend experience yeah they don't really care about the astrology they just kind of like that there's like this right esoteric girlfriend online describing them uh paying attention to their personality and trying to do a cold read on them, right? Like for a lot of these people, this is probably the closest that they've gotten to intimacy in the last like seven years. Yeah, they just want a girl talking about their niche interests. So the actual type of chick doesn't really matter, which is why you get like a lot of these like e-girls who are like unironic prostitutes who became crypto traders. Like there's for before um, TikTok and stuff, it was really common for porn stars to become like crypto celebs. Mm-hmm. Um, like uh, I don't know their names anymore, but like there's a few like legitimate porn stars who like got really big on crypto Twitter because they you know porn stars they are porn and strippers and all those prostitutes they're always already on the cusp of tech because of like who uses them so like tech guys will talk to them about new technology so consistently like strippers will know about like cutting edge tech and like way sooner than everybody else like it's, <laughs> like it's it's really kind of funny so like. Uh, so because of this, they are like, they like jumped to the forefront of like crypto Twitter in like 2015 and they were already like influencers in the, in the sphere. Uh, so, you know, once those, once the porn stars kind of like were relegated more to the background, you get the e-girls, the TikTok chicks, the, the whatever's your, your fucking like escorts in Dubai who became a uh, crypto celebs, that kind of shit. Wow. That's so interesting. Mm -hmm. it's also like these are the people who uh are best in the position to like capitalize on like an entirely lonely male demographic hey (laughs) what's up our 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 special guests yeah we've got a bunch of them running around they're real hungry lucas how many cats do you have now it's three dude i got three of them They're, that's they're actually really... not as many as i thought that you'd had <laughs> I don't know. so so i had about a two-week period where the black one ran away and uh do you remember when i found those guts in my yard like they were just random there was this random thing of guts and uh <laughs> just like a pile of them and 
so I, I found him and I was like, oh, I'll walk him. I'll walk my white cat over and have him eat these. It'll be healthy for him. And then he did. He ate them. And then after I saw those guts for two weeks, I didn't see my black cat. And I gradually started being like, oh, my God, did I just have my like, did some sort of animal get the black cat and like eat everything except the guts? And now I just fed his brother like the remains. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, this is awful. But then uh, he came back. And uh, during that two weeks, though, the two that I had left, I realized, like, I'm supposed to have two cats. I'm not supposed to have three cats. Like, this additional one. And, you know, I love him. Great guy. But he's sort of a spurred. And uh, so he, he'll, like, come over and, like, just slap the other ones in the face just out of nowhere and, like, hiss at them and stuff. And, like, ever since he's come back, everyone's, like, all tense and scared, right? Like, it's like an abusive dad returning home after, like, two weeks of uh, just, like, disappearing on, like, an alcoholic bender. He's coming back now and just, like, beating the kids around and stuff, and they're all, like, hiding again. Damn. It's, it's, that's deep. You gotta, yeah, two cats is the way, apparently. I'm about to get a cat. I hear that's how you get ran through. Yeah. Many bitches. I, I've been really shocked by, like, the amount of uh, women who use the cats to talk to me. Yeah, I you would think this is why everyone tells you it's a dog, but no, clearly yeah. dogs are played out. Well, and it's Honestly. not even like it's not even just like like I'm not walking the cats, right? But like literally, women will come up to me and say like, "Oh, like do you have a pet?" Because they see like cat hairs on my shirt or something. Like it's mm. really absurd. I feel like it's a very low level of like I I know that a lot of people buy a dog or buy a cat like guys will like buy a dog so they can walk in the park and like ran, run into the love of their life yeah. right or like cute girls will come and want to pet their dog but I feel like it's just a really low level of of like entry into a conversation it's just like for awkward people who don't really know how to start a conversation and then yeah and this is the problem is like a lot of the people say oh like I got a dog but I didn't get a girlfriend from it it's like it's the same thing as guys who start exercising to get girls mm-hmm. where you like, <laughs> you think it's, uh, you think it's gonna, you think it's gonna fix everything. And like, it does get more girls talking to you, but like that initial activation energy being lowered doesn't change the fact that like, once the girl does start talking to you, you're still like boring. Yes. It really is just like, yeah, it just lowers the activation energy. That's a good way to put it. Yeah, so um, this, be perfect this is my you, problem. Is I love talking to random people. So these people come up to me and they start asking me about my cat or my and I, like I have like a, a ten gigabyte video file uh, mentally <laughs> saved, like re- replay for them about my life with my cats and my adventures <laughs> as a cat dad, a disgusting Reddit cat father. <laughs> and then after ten minutes, they're just like staring at you blankly as you're talking about like when the time that you put your cats in the shower. <laughs> exactly. this is the time it, it jumped seven feet over my shower wall and it came in when my skin was like soft and like softened by the water and it fucking climbed me and i was bleeding for like 30 hours now you know what i need to do i need to get a cat so i can start doing like cat cosplay and just like blow the fuck up on twitter and just start doing anime scenes with my cat in cosplay and that'll that, fucking that was kill. something Wait, that the cat I, is gonna be in cosplay not you. yeah i'm gonna make cat outfits oh i thought you meant you and i was like oh no no Verse, you're gonna no, start no. sewing cat outfits. Yeah, this is this is the way. I'm gonna start fucking sewing cat outfits and making like Naruto scenes and just fucking getting a million views, easy peasy. This is an actual thought that I had because uh, I had like a small Twitter account for like a two month period in 2015 ish, and uh, it was over. One of my friends who was in like anime Twitter was like, "Oh, come join Twitter with me. It'll be fun." And I had this really really disturbing realization that if I went. And I started posting videos of me as like a muscular guy in like a maid outfit doing fruity little dances. I could get like seven million followers. And yeah, I, like, pretty much. I like, yeah, weighed, like uh, I waited yeah. against like the you know the, I made a little pros and cons chart, and I, I was like, I don't really. You know, it's 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 you gotta sell your soul, right? So you you gotta right, sell your yeah. do you want to sell your soul for clout, and, or do you want to just I, construct I did sell my soul for clout, but in a slightly different way, right? Like instead of uh, instead of doing the fruity little cat things, I'm now just tuning my brain into like AI uh, shitty engagement bait tweets. <laughs> exactly. Oh, speaking of, I, I don't know if necessarily our audience knows who Marie is. Uh, that's Marie. so true we are such awful we're, the worst fucking, we're like 20 minutes in we never even fucking introduced the guest this is Easter. marie at p-a-s-t-i-e <laughs> of no no, no. We're, we just, boyfriend stealing fame there you go boyfriend defending fame 
fucking how to steal your boyfriend, how to uh, get your face stolen and post it on every stream, and how to <laughs> and how, how to, to destroy dishes. your coworker's marriage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, yes. I didn't write a tweet on that, but that would be a good tweet. You should do that you, one. You, I'm fired, right? Like it's kind of upstream of that. Like if the guy gets fired, there's like He's a fifteen percent chance yeah. that his wife goes away just because she like loses respect for him anyway. Well, he yeah, could have connected the two and tell her that he didn't get fired, and then get. And then she's gonna be like, "What are you doing at home before me?" And then he could be like, "I'm becoming a content creator." <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> famously, women anywhere. love that. Famously, women love that. They love content creation. Me as a content creator, I've had great luck with women. You're like, oh, you have a podcast? Wow. All right. Um, That's what yeah. I need to start. I, I'm going to start like every day. I'm going to start shilling links to the podcast and to the Telegram and all of these things. Let's and it's going to become it's going to become so annoying to everybody that because uh, right now I've realized nobody wants to like say it's annoying. But like if they do start saying it's annoying, then that gets me engagement and mm. then more people will click. Right. So I have to do it to such an extent that it like disgusts and horrifies people. Yes, Honestly, I like this. I don't get annoyed at anyone chilling their stuff if I like them at all. Like, no, I don't either. Yeah, yes. I've never gotten annoyed. I, I, I used to, when I first joined Twitter, I was like, "Yo, these dumb grifters!" And then after like <laughs> six months, I was like, "Wait, no! Like everybody who doesn't do this is like an idiot." Yeah, yes, for sure. Yeah, you gotta I show remember yourself. when everyone was so angry at Soulbra and would like, yeah, it was like there was a lot of judgment to Soulbra for his for his marketing and his grifting they're like he's a dirty grifter but like mm, that's not true you're jealous so true. <laughs> it, was, it was so obviously jealousy in retrospect <laughs> to it because it was like it was all coming exactly from like the same guys who had like like or you'd always hear things like uh oh, i taught soul bra everything i know or he was in my dms asking me this stuff as a 200 follower reply guy or stuff like that and uh there there's got to be some understanding of like okay, well, if you taught him everything you knew, then you had the ability to do everything that he did. And for three years, you didn't. And you fucking fumbled the bag. Yeah, How like you, you turbo fumbled <laughs> it because there was this like massive market segment here. And I don't know, like right-wing Twitter is always kind of uniquely like this where they like, uh, they they just like, they're, they're really hard to get to support any grift. I guess they like bought BAP's podcast, but for the most part, like, and I know a ton of the money Twitter guys who basically like left right wing Twitter to go off and do their own thing. Like, I'm not going to name names here, but I've talked to like four or five of them at this point who have said, yeah, like I wanted to do something over here. And I, I reached out to a lot of these guys about like working with them on some sort of a project. And they all basically said like, fuck you, you're gay. Grifting is gay. And I was like, oh, do you have like a trust fund or like a good job? Like, what do you and none of them did anything else like they just hated money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's and that's you don't want to be a fucking loser. You gotta you gotta pick a struggle. You could be a fucking uh loser, you could be broke. I don't know, you can you can have dissenting opinions, but you can't be like broke you know, dissenting opinions and like n not have ambition. It's just fucking it's too much. You can't yeah, like I mean grifter as an insult just doesn't make any sense to me coming from somebody who makes no money, right? Like Yeah, get on the get on the grind. Well, what the word grifting, like, what does that exactly mean? I mean um, it's, it's like you're being so grifting is like, uh, oh, that's grafting, actually. I always thought what of does it, it come like, from? Grifting, grifting started off, it's, it's another one of those words that's had like incel tier scope, scope, yeah, where grifting at first basically meant like scamming people in the sense that you are getting their money without providing them something of legitimate value, yes. And now grifting has scope crept to the point where it basically just means like, are you selling anything? Yes. And which is cringe because, you know, what's the point of having this many people? Right. Like it, it really does become a thing of why are you online? Like, why do you spend eight hours posting a day if you don't want to like make money? Oh, I'm here for the friendships. Uh, like I can understand. Are you, are you like 12, bro? Like you're fucking 32 <laughs> years old spending eight hours on Twitter for the friendships. What is going on? And I, I guess to an extent, if you're like 22 and your whole thing is getting banned 45 times, I guess. Sure. But if you're those not. Those people are really weird too. Those people are like, so insane. <laughs> I don't get it at all. I think yeah. they're done. I think that was a fad and those people are either they have their one account or they're gone now. Yeah, I think that's I think that fat is kind of. It over seems now. like that was like that was just like a fun thing for people to do, like get banned a bunch of times. Hashtag like find my friends. 
Yeah, but like now it's like, all right, getting banned is so inconvenient. Like I just rather. There's still that not. group, right? There's still the group of. Uh, now they're like doing the ironic Groiper rebrand. It's mostly like the Amarna people where they. Uh, you know, they just like openly post the N word or like post the the suicidal like tranny jacks and stuff like that. And. Yeah, and then you get banned and then you get shadow banned anyway. So like no one even sees your joke. Yeah, I think well, it's and, weird and it's not fun. Like, I don't know. It's just kind of boring. Well, it's it's kind of become like a mark of pride to all of them, right? Like they're, they're priding themselves on being like weird, like abnormal. Mm-hmm. Like it, the only times you ever get like serious rises out of any of them is if you imply that they are in some way like a normie and then they like flip shit. They're, they're all very obsessed with like the idea that they are like a fringe <laughs> group. <laughs> Yeah, everyone wants to be counterculture, and I guess there's, like, an edge to that, I guess, especially in, like, fucking Zoomer world where nothing is, like, uh, subversive or, like, yeah. no, no, nothing is transgressive. But it's, like, also, like, all right, if you're not 21 or, like, not in college, like, you got, you, I don't know, put this time to use, right? I mean, like, as much as I like to spend all my day on Twitter, I, I use it unironically to get paid, right? Like, it gets me yeah. jobs, <laughs> and it's, like, you know... I I'll make a I'll make a dick joke as much as the next person, but if I'm not also making money, it's like this is not really worth it. Yeah, you know, I don't know. We got the, I, this yeah. is the Griff the Griff uh, the Griff War Room, the Griff Command Room. We got the representative Griff Master General here. Yeah, well, I feel like when I first started Twitter, I immediate like I was interested in like learning new things, and I. I did learn a lot of new things and I met a lot of cool people, but I was like immediately, I thought immediately like I need to be gaining followers and making money from this. I think that was like very early on that I recognized that I didn't know that there was such a thing as internet communities where you kind of meet people and socialize on the internet. Hmm. I don't know. Oh, yeah, was, yeah I, cause you came I on, grew up on that. You came a on totally me. normie girl, right? Yeah, I never, I was, I did not kind of grow up online as a teenager. So I was, I was actually 24 years old when I first like discovered wow. Twitter and I made like my first online friends and I just I remember I saw I saw a tweet that really resonated with me and then I kind of like found the like esoteric health community and then eventually found like right wing Twitter and I was like wow these are my people this is so cool and so I socialized a lot on the internet but I didn't I, I think before that I really didn't understand that the internet works like how the internet works um at Mm. all and i did not like i did not know that you could make friends but i think making friends on the internet is like if you enjoy socializing on the internet and messaging people and exchanging information that way then um it's a good place to be because you can gain followers and like learn new things and eventually make money off of it and the overall access that you get to people someplace like twitter is just higher at this point than like anywhere else yeah, that's what got that's what got me here. Is just like you could just like, like basically you could just pick someone you want to become friends with eventually, or like learn like I don't know me like I've I'm like all right this celebrity let's say I don't know who the fuck it is just be like oh I want to meet so and so if you dedicate any kind of attention towards it you'll meet them eventually right yeah it's not like this, like, I mean I I reply guide verse for a while and now we have a podcast together look at that <laughs> boom boom Wait, and, or, so- this is funny too look at uh. So how did I meet Marie, right, is one of my real life friends who had a follower account of like 12 at the time somehow got added by her to some group chat. And then he like sent me a screenshot of like the group chat and said like, LOL, look what this girl said. And then I said, like, add me to the group chat. Powerful. (laughs) (laughs) Hell yeah. And then Lucas came and he was saying like all sorts of crazy things. And I was really afraid he was going to scandalize the other girls in the chat. And that is that, and then he didn't. This is why Lucas. This is how I knew Lucas was um wasn't just another uh insane person in my DMs. Is because he <laughs> is because he doesn't he can say insane things, but the people don't turn on him. And this is the and this is the key uh factor of who who's gonna make it is can you can you be insane in a group chat or like online and then everyone not turn on you or or can everyone turn on you and then you could still like redeem and yourself and you flip them yeah and you flip them all yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like when he like got uh what's your face uh Bulma and got her tilted with his like messaging and then like and everyone like blocked him and was mad at him and then he like in like a week or two was like in Booba Hub and like everyone liked him <laughs> I was like okay he's he's a good one 
<laughs> that was super funny. I forgot about that. That was like yeah. uh that was a really quick road to redemption arc, right? Like that <laughs> Wait, cause you know what it is? Like uh a lot of people were mad, like the little the less funny people, but then like Booba Hub is trolls, half of them. So they were just like po- like going through your timeline, posting like all your tweets for like a week, and now they were just like, Yo, we gotta get him in here. We like this dude. <laughs> I thought it was really funny. The giraffe like hated me at first. The giraffe is one that has less sense of humor than everyone else. Uh, he he once you once he likes you, he likes you, but um, he's a little ornery. He's a little ornery. <laughs> the whole the whole scene was really funny at that time. I don't actually know anything about what you guys are talking about. Who is this? Person? Oh, base Booba Hub is a group chat. It's a no. group chat. And group. Well, oh. who's the? I know about Booba Hub, like Tandem. So do you remember when I uh? I sent like a bunch of DMs to that girl pretending to be afraid that she was going to kill me. No, I don't remember. Did you miss? That. You might. You've. Yeah, this might have actually been during our uh, our period of inactivity there for a while. But uh, so essentially, what happened is like over the course of like a day or two, every maybe thirty minutes to an hour, I had my secretary remind me to send a message to this girl, and I would send like a new message. Uh, I started off with a like I faked a screenshot from her and pretended like somebody had sent it to me and it said something like, I'm gonna kill that Lucas fucker or something like that. And uh I just went off like, you know, like uh neurotically like fourteen year old boy posting being like, Oh my god, like why somebody sent me this, is this true? Like are you planning to kill me? And then just went off progressively more uh into the hole about like, oh god, like uh you know, I I really don't want to die, but like, if this is my last week to live, like, can you just give me a heads up by this time? I need to know because <laughs> I'd like to take vacation. If it's my last week, I don't want to spend it working in the <laughs> office. And uh, eventually, I finally got her to respond, and then she posted on the timeline like the this this like fifteen message series that I sent her, and said like, "What the fuck is this? Like, who are you? I've never talked to you before in my life." <laughs> and. Uh, I don't know. It, it was about 50% of people thought it was hilarious. 50% of people. This was a really strange thing to me, though, is everything that I said in the messages, like I never said anything threatening to her. It was just like vaguely weird. Yeah. <laughs> it was one of those things where like if a girl <laughs> didn't get the joke, she would have gotten like the ick because like just a weird guy was like messaging her. But uh, a bunch of guys read them and they were like, report him like this is fucked mm-hmm. up. This is evil. Well, this is like, during I- the peak of like uh, Web3 like canceling. It's like the end of the bull market. And so a lot of the people who are like in crypto Twitter like suck. Like like now if you did that, I mean, everyone knows who you are now, but like no one would get mad at you now because like only people left here like are have a sense of humor. Right. Back then it was still like. Oh yeah, there, there were tons yeah. of like moon kings, like monkey guys. Yeah, just, just like trying to get the last like so, drops like, of money. so like actual like capitalist like people who just really wanted to make money but don't really belong on the internet. Yeah, but also they're like woke, right? Because yeah. everyone's woke now. So like, there's a a couple of people got canceled for like bad. You know, when when the money starts to dry up, mm-hmm. people are like, "How else can we grift?" And they start like canceling people in, and then. uh Wait, so cancel people the, allows them to grift? They make money on it? Yeah, yeah. because in crypto, everything's money-based, right? So it's like... Anything, anything that happens to you in terms of engagement can be flipped into money. <laughs> right, so imagine, <laughs> for example, think. especially if, like, a company, you ca- cancel a company, right? Now the price is going to go down because people are like, I don't want to support that company. And in crypto, you markets go either way. You, and you can, like, trade the market going down and make money off the, the price action going down. Yeah. Right. It's not only one direction because yeah, it's finance. So, so they'll like, cancel any- someone in a certain coin and then people will be like, oh, we need to sell this coin. Like this coin is attached to bad stuff. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. And then they'll sell all of it and make money off that. Exactly. Shorting your own coin would be short. But I mean, it's also like uh, you don't necessarily need to just short your own asset. You can kind of like, you know, like if there's a big bastion of people coming out and saying like, oh, we're going to we're going to ruin these people financially. We're going to come after them. You can always flip it into, oh, I am such a victim. Like these people are yeah. destroying me, especially if you're a girl. Right. Like this is the ultimate girl power move is anytime anyone says anything bad about you, you can just like, woe is me. How is this happening? Et cetera, et cetera. And then people start donating to them, too, because everyone has their, you know, their wallet address. You know what I mean? So like there's yeah. a, a million ways to make money. So uh, just by being a victim or like, or just, whatever. I mean, with me, like with, with the towel boy tweet thing, like when everyone was, uh, 
everyone was going off and clicking on my profile after it because they were like, is this serious? Is this a joke? What's going on? Like, I don't get it. And then they'd come to my profile and scroll my other posts and be like, oh, it's a joke. Okay. And then they'd follow me. Yeah. Like it, it always, anything that gets people looking at you, like, unless you suck, like, unless they look at you and say like, wow, <laughs> this is not a good person. Then yeah. it always winds up being a positive. Yeah, there's basically there's no such thing as bad engagement for the most part. Like, and and if in it's actually kind of interesting because you really can't get to, it, the only way to get canceled is like if you're proper boomer, like if your whole life is like proper boomer. But if it's online, like there's literally nothing that can go wrong that can fuck you up. It it just creates more people who like you. Well, it, something went wrong for me after what I happened? went viral. Um. Well, so well, first of all, after I went viral, I just like experienced a lot of very negative emotions Mm. due to going viral because it was just very intense like I felt like my mind was always in Twitter as oh yeah no I mean we we both kind of uh we both kind of had a rough week that week me with the towel boy thing then you going thread viral then me copying you (laughs) and like there definitely is like a level of like psychic fatigue that you experience just with like that many people focusing on you and the fact that like you like I couldn't even talk to people anymore because it it fucked up my DM so bad. My notifications were unusable, so like there was no way to know what anybody was saying or replying or quote tweeting me with. And I assume yeah. the same is happening to you, right? Like you you couldn't go through, and you would have to like manually search all of the thousands of quote tweets of your post if you wanted to know what people were saying. And that's just mm-hmm. like mental illness inducing. Yeah, I just I haven't even looked through all the quote tweets on my on my two threads yet because. I don't like never. Yeah, do don't it. do it. You don't need to I'm do it. I'm just that, not yeah. going to. But it was just like a lot. It was like a lot of energy that I felt like I was spending on Twitter. And like every time I would refresh, there would be 20 new things. Yep. Like yep. That's actually what a uh, 20 more. Well, yeah. Welcome to having a lot of followers. Now this is a thing. This is a fun. Uh, yeah. You, you I, get it. You can just I, infinitely I, scroll your your notifications now. Yeah, I can. I finally hit the point where I can't reply to people anymore. Like I used to when I when I was around like 15k ish. I could respond to whoever replied to me and like I had fun like replying to people is the most fun that I have on Twitter because the funniest engagements are always like little back and forth things and I think it's super funny to have like 15,000 followers and like get super into a conversation with like a 21 follower lobby it's Mm -hmm. it's just like optically hilarious to me uh so I love doing that or like responding instantly when somebody quote tweets me when they expect that like I'm not going to oh that's my favorite thing I love that so much and I just can't do it anymore. Like I have, it, something happened when I got to 30K ish where it's just too much. Like I can't, I can't see it in my notifications. I can't keep up with anything. Like I've effectively turned off replies and quote tweets in terms of things that I even have visibility on. Okay. That's probably good. I feel the opposite, Lucas. You see them I, more? Yeah. I never used to respond to anyone because I thought that it was just like reply guys who were going to try to get with me. And so I was just like, this is annoying. But now that I have a bunch of followers, I like feel like I have more of an audience and I feel like responding to people is a performance art. But before I went viral last week, I never wanted to reply to anyone. I was just like, Mm. like, I want to reply to them. I just like I have to go and manually check the posts in order to even see what they say. I feel like more distant. I guess I feel more distance between myself and my followers now. And so I can detach from them enough to respond. I, like oh. in just a funny way whereas before i feel like i feel like maybe people like especially men would think that if i respond to them then like i'm gonna it was be... like especially meaningful yeah it was like meaningful but like now they like just see me as a character i guess on the screen and so if i reply they're like oh cool like this random girl applied like replied to me but it's like she's not going to be my friend obviously I've, I've always had the sense that i'm kind of like uh like if you're posting online you're kind of like a character on a stage mm-hmm. and if you're like treating it in some other like more personal way it's always been a sort of like deep failing of your yeah it's like you don't understand what you're doing like yeah. you should not once you get past honestly past a thousand followers you're just you're not a real person on the internet anymore you're a character not even and a thousand followers is at the point where you can basically know everyone but even still it's something about it's like okay it's like uh you you've graduated to playing a character on twitter have like uh-huh you're supposed yeah, to like scale. your account has its own personality at this point. Yeah, you I don't know. Like, like I mean, in spaces, I'm sure this, 
-hmm. Like I joined a space with like a girl who was like a really close friend of mine and her friend. And so I was just like chatting normally, but then a bunch of my followers started like coming into the space and like my brain like couldn't have a normal conversation. Mm -hmm. Like I had to shift into like kind of like yeah like influencer girl marie boss mode. Marie mode. that's the way yeah you got to like my yeah. brain just like wouldn't let me like be normal i was wondering about that because girls seem to really 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 have a uh a hard time blending like performative characters with like what they do what they sort of like seg into naturally mm -hmm. i feel like it's more of a thing Wait, what you, do you mean with, they have a, a hard time blending like what you were what you're talking about where you feel like you have like your influencer mode when you have like people spectating you but you also have like this is how i am with my close friends mode yeah i feel like, like right it's now easier if you have a fake normal name. mode but like it, when i'm in spaces i'm like pretending to be like this guru like saint like, <laughs> mm -hmm. like i think it's, it's so much easier to when you have a fake name i think like it's like that's like a character yeah like the pseudo anonymity even if you know it's whatever it's like it just gives you a like okay when i'm when people are referring to me as this then i can behave in this way you know Marie like, i feel Miller. like my power is stolen from me when people use my real name i'm like oh, ugh, what's going on <laughs> did you did you get a bunch of good dms from people though yeah i did i got a ton of interesting dms because oh, nice. I, when I put my profile to you for like two days, I literally have a 400 plus DM backlog from people. And like probably 200 of those are my friends messaging me jokingly saying like, haha, like show me your breasts, princess. But like 200 <laughs> of them are real. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I mean like now you got everyone on. So like Lucas has made it so that a lot of the crypto people are using girl accounts now. He's, he's, he's that, was, that was a really funny unexpected consequence like <laughs> i thought i thought i was gonna do the thread and like everybody was gonna understand that like uh it's only a hack if you have like the content for it but now there's a bunch of like two follower accounts mm -hmm. who are like i changed my profile to a model why is nobody following me and it's like <laughs> your content still sucks dude like the, the female <laughs> profile picture is an amplifier right like you still you need to amplify something if you're just amplifying zero it's still zero yeah so rip bozo now you have now you're just a girl online yeah but if you take if you take someone who's achieved like an an anon male 10k and you give them like a female profile picture they're gonna they're gonna smack some dude they're gonna hit yeah. some bangers the anon 10k i think people underestimated that's a very difficult milestone to just be like interesting solely off of what you're saying yeah i think that this is like this is like a grind that I think many people need to. Experience. I mean, obviously, none of us here think that this is a. Uh, <laughs> none of us think it's difficult because all of us have accomplished it, right? But like of in course. terms of like a uh, a percentile breakdown, like if you look at just the number of people who managed to achieve it, it's like it's pretty low. But there is yeah, also a thing of low, like, yeah. I mean, especially now, just looking at, uh, and es especially now that I've had like a basic like plus ten k in like a weekend or something, I'm getting to like super focus in on what happens in my brain in terms of like posting optimizations when i gain a bunch of followers and uh like the sort of engagement farming that i start doing now yeah there's Everyone a flow state that. it's not necessarily that i'm becoming more interesting it's just that i'm like attempting to bait more normie attention and as a result i actually hate a lot of my content now yeah, that's actually the other thing. Um, the things that go off the the things that make me genuinely laugh, like I think it's hilarious. No one cares. Like I guess yeah. no, it gets literally. I I the the other thing I made a post yesterday that had me fucking cackling, and it has twenty five likes. No one cares. It's just um not a single one of the things I consider a banger bang, but it's the it's the nonsense that people like so eh. there's definitely like a sort of middle ground that you, like i really liked the drone post i was proud of that one because it was both like actually i thought like a good post and it managed to get engagement but there's uh you, you can kind of like massage your brain into getting into uh like the tweet that i stole from bruce where i was like if you get married uh or if you don't get married before 30 then you're a loser like, I think that's just an extremely funny thing to tweet because of the responses you know it's going to bait. Mm -hmm. And, like, it did well, I guess. But, like, I like finding things that I know will do – they will do well because people will, like, interpret them seriously. But also they, they will just be hilarious to me, like, in the tweeting of them. Like, the idea of just, like, taking an arbitrary demographic of people and saying, like, <laughs> you're a loser. <laughs> like, fuck you. <laughs> 
and then watching them get mad in the comments right and all these people come in and they're like i got like 50 comments from people being like um actually i'm 34 years old and i have three boats so i don't think i'm a fucking loser <laughs> and i responded to them saying like if you come and reply to me coping then you're a loser <laughs> That is very funny. Yeah, the thing is, I, I I think I got known for, I think now I can't, given my demo and also getting blocked by so many fucking people, I can't bait in the same way I used to bait. I have to bait in like a different, like I can't make a take and get someone any, anyone mad anymore. I've alienated anyone who will ever get mad at a take I have. They're all gone. Whether, because after COVID, <laughs> after fucking um, all the riots and shit, there's not a single person left who can read one of my takes and get mad. They're just, they blocked me already. So that's just not an avenue I could have. I have to like, I don't know. Right now it seems that people like, uh, when I make gross comments, I don't know why, <laughs> but, but that's yeah. more entertaining for me and I'm half asleep. I feel but like, I, yeah. have to I feel like normies. sex stuff does really well on Twitter. What, sex yeah. stuff? Yeah, anything related to sex does really well on Twitter. Oh, of course, yeah, because it's, it's based humor. But I try to do into the uh the enlightened the exalted sex joke you know i like i like the really <laughs> what does that mean, I mean <laughs> yeah, i like to do like cl- a classy sex joke you know i did a few oh. of them last night let's see this one this one made me laugh but i don't think anyone else found it as funny as i did when i was saying uh it's only come if it's from the cum region of france otherwise it's sparkling nut i thought that was hilarious i was fucking crying um but you know some people have <laughs> different day some people or the, actually the funniest one to me that it has literally 27 likes, but this one made me like actually cry laughing was only whores need extra pillows for their bed. I think that's hilarious, but you know, whatever. So be it. I thought it was know. funny and I did like it. I just didn't really understand what it me- meant. Like, is, it too, is it too heady? Do I need to explain the well, joke? So the problem with don't, that one wait, is- Wait, don't explain like, it. I just don't, I just, it doesn't matter that I don't understand it. I just want no, to- No, no, no. The joke is, it. no, no. I think it's, uh, it might be too- to, uh, it, it's short. real it's real but you have to understand that like you have to when you're tweeting something you have to tweet about people who have like a large enough sample size of women that they've slept with recently that they have like noticed this right and like yeah. the portion of people who have picked First, up on this trend yeah i'm ran through <laughs> unfortunately i'm too ran through for my followers <laughs> oh, your over. followers are not going to understand what you're talking about yeah i That's think a good I, point. Had, I had something similar like that where i tweeted like uh if your girlfriend if your girlfriend argues in the replies for more than two posts, you're bad at sex. <laughs> I think that one was, uh, I think that one hit because despite people uh, like maybe not experiencing it themselves, like everybody knows by now, like there have been enough, we don't need to name names, but there have been enough Twitter figures yeah. uh, who have become sort of notorious for, for arguing, these, right, for, for having maybe maybe 10,000 follower or 5,000 follower, pretty big accounts where they just argue for eight hours straight with like random 50 follower reply men. And not yes. in like a way of like, I'm doing this for an audience in like a way of like, I'm You're not getting this laid as enough. an explicit outlet for my own sexual frustration. Yes. We all are familiar with this account, hopefully. Um, <laughs> Wait, who is account? it? It's a... Uh, it's okay. It? You you know this. You know this. Okay, girl. I think I know. It could be one of actually. No, it's a lady that you would have met me the day you met me, uh, that you met in person when you lived in New York. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, that's who he's referring to. Okay, but, but there's um, lots of how have men, you been there's lots of content. men who do this too. Oh yeah, I'm sure, well, but men, it's not as funny. The thing with men is it's not necessarily like an a necessary. Uh, like they're doing this because of some sort of sexual frustration. Like men just have autism. So yeah. men will go and they will keep replying until the other person stops, right? Like this is just how men behave in their default state. I've also literally had my girl naked next to me while arguing on Twitter on my phone. Like for like – Yeah, like, like it, it's just a very <laughs> – so I mean maybe they're doing it because they like talking to the girl. But it's very frequently just a thing of like if a man has somebody responding to him, he just keeps going. Yeah, basically, yeah. And you can test this too. Like you can find you can find basically any small account and you can engage them with – an obviously male and obviously female, like a whatever profile. And they just keep, they keep going. Or if there's a point where they determine like, Oh, you're a troll. They like bucket you as like, are you a real person or are you a troll? And if they decide, Oh, this is a troll person, then sometimes they'll like block you or go away. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But if you engage like genuinely, like I used to do this on Reddit when I was in college, back when Reddit was acceptable, I'm old guys. 
Um, <laughs> so I used to like spend like I used to write like ten thousand like work, character replies for like weeks of, in a single argument. I loved these for guys nothing. on Reddit, dude. These you were one of the <laughs> essay posters, bro. I'm an essay poster. Yeah, <laughs> I would see this shit and just be like, "Who the fuck <laughs> is?" And it would always it would always be on some like product review comparing two like twenty dollar products, and it would be like, "Hey guys, so I've had both of these for the last five years, and here are my thoughts." And then, and then it's fucking. You have to click read more like seven times to get the full ten thousand words of the text, and you look at it, and it has like two upvotes. And you go to their profile, <laughs> and it's all it's all these reviews and these essays, and they all have like three cumulative updutes. Yeah, that's that was literally me. I was an essay poster for fucking years. It was that was like I used to, and I used to just like get into more and more niche uh, uh, subreddits that were like designed to be essay posting, and it was so much fun for me. I was like, yes. And then I moved to Facebook groups. Um, right. Facebook groups are. And then those were designed for essay posting too. But I, I love a so, good this like. This is so weird to have Marie here. And I'm yeah. I, like not have her have any posting. Uh, like how did you grow up posting, Marie? Uh, like I literally within your first like how many months of coming online did I meet you? Uh-huh. Well, I did. I had. Well, I did have Twitter for years and years. I was just posting to like 12 people and I would only post like a couple of times a month. But I did think I had some bangers when I was like 16, 17, posting to my 12 friends. Nice. Everybody who has it in them has had it in them at all times. And yeah. it might so come true. out. You train yourself to let it out more or less than you did before, but mm-hmm. uh, it always escaped, right? Like, I I've never was... met somebody who was a 12 follower account that grew into like a massive, huge account that didn't have some bangers as a 12 follower account. Yeah. Well, I didn't, I just didn't understand how to get followers or to make friends. And I think I would have done really well as like a person as a teenager with internet friends or like, but I just never did the, when I was 14, my best friend had a, um, gosh, what was that website? Tumblr. Mm -hmm. My best friend had a Tumblr and she actually got in a lot of trouble on it and like did a lot of bad things. And Mm. because of that, like, and because of that, like, and she had internet friends and I remember like being like interested in what she was doing and then shortly after like she kind of got big on tumblr she got in a lot of trouble like with her parents and with like just like a lot of bad shit happened to her and she like went off the internet forever and just like black filled you on the concept yeah and like the thing that happened with her was like really bad and like included like 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 bad pictures of her as yeah she's a girl she's a girl on the internet yeah below 18 yeah makes sense and it was just like the whole situation was really bad and like i because of that i was like okay so i guess this is just like not this is not what you do this is this is not i used to i used to be like on the internet my parents used to google me to find me (laughs) and they would just and they would like i would come home from school and they'd have like messages like printed out like no online writing this i've heard heard that when people get fbi visits over here on twitter that's what they look like the fbi prints out color copies of the tweets and shows up and then they They show up with highlighter yeah like they they deadpan show them their own tweets and read them (laughs) off with like a totally straight face and say like what did you mean by like elon musk groiper rape <laughs> the problem yeah the problem was i used to use my like online alias as like my gamer tag and stuff and like my email so like my mom like knew what my alias was and this was the problem so i fucking so she would just like google my alias and this is when you know there's only but so much stuff on the internet like, yeah, like they didn't, in even, 2003. they didn't even take up all the three digit names yet exactly so it was so easy to find me and she would just like like and then so she would search my real name and like my alias and just find like countless pes- posts and just like read them off to me i'm like oh am i grounded again she's like yeah <laughs> i i used tumblr as like a dating app in high school i had a big uh i started off during gamergate i had like a big anti-feminist account and then as i realized that you could have more sex if you became a big feminist account Classic. i did that so instead and i became like one of the og uh like dirtbag leftists nice Wait, and so, Lucas, i did that too in college you- so you met friends as a high school student on Tumblr? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, how did you find how did you get to them? Uh like you so just it started off it started off by like networking through like theater girls at my school, actually. Mm. Okay. Nice. So you would like have a girl that you liked and then you'd be like, Oh, meet this like theater girl and like go visit her and then I'll hang out with you guys. Uh no. It was like I was uh 
I was friends with all the theater people and they, they were actually the ones who like told me to make a Tumblr. They were like, you have the perfect level of androgyny to succeed on this platform. You should definitely, <laughs> definitely join. So then I did. And then I became like some, some massive shit Lord and they were all horrified. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and, then I, and then i realized wait a second like this isn't getting me any sex and uh then i turned it around i became a i was a early adopter of the dirtbag leftist feminist male uh trope it really did get you a lot of like get you really laid for a while it does not work anymore i don't know what people said <laughs> no, it's been it's been but, uh, it, but it really before. worked i remember unironically on a date and um bro if you if you knew about like andrea dworkin back in like 2013 20 oh yeah Insta- or whatever. instantly like, getting laid yeah no like i, I was this is literally 2012 13 this is I, before this is before feminists really got busted i might say this yeah is yeah they, they were not this is when feminists ugly, yeah. were still largely like hipsters mm-hmm. and yeah they, they were all formal. hipsters and they, they didn't have wore, the they wore birkenstocks and maybe they only shaved their legs twice a week but it wasn't anything that you couldn't overlook and like septum piercings had like just started so they were like not like that gross yet they were like kind of still trendy. I don't know. They weren't like people weren't like super gnarly. But like, yeah, I remember in on a date, I in like 2012, 13, uh, I she was like something, something, something. Oh, um, thanks for like walking me in my car, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then I said she was like basically implying that she was like scared of like, you know, getting like attacked. And I was like, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Rape culture. And she said, what? And I was like, oh, yeah, rape culture. And then she like on ironically just like. So it was like, oh, take your pants off right now. I was like, okay, sure, whatever. It sounds like you such a meme is? because, like, at this point, it like literally, if you you could make a satirical cartoon of that scenario, and it would be funny because of how like unrealistic it is. But like, this shit was all fucking real. Like, it was if all you, real, yeah. if you were one of the early adopters of like feminist theory, you just and like sex got boring after like two years you know it's kind of like the party stuff where like you do the party stuff for a while you do the sex stuff for a while and like eventually all of it burned out but there was a period there where like i still didn't know uh i like i i had no experience with any of this stuff and it was still like new and exciting and i was like this is definitely like the easiest foot in the door for it yeah it was very if you knew the right buzzwords they all knew exactly what you were referencing and it was you were just like and then I and would then like cross post to Facebook too, right? Like I would take my <laughs> I would take my synthesized posts of just like what the most acceptable possible take would be and go and uh just post it to Facebook. And as long as you can do like whatever the uh whatever the most agreeable version of the take is with more humor than everyone else on the timeline, like mm-hmm. that's this is essentially how to be like a PC friendly poster. Yes. This is now. Um, this is what none what? of us do on Twitter. But no, I don't do this like, now. Yeah. What is the equivalent of that now, though? Because like everyone is so there. There isn't any. There's not. Yeah, it there's doesn't no work the same way. Like it, that, it, it was so. literally like a a free hack. Like in in terms of uh, like this would be like getting into Bitcoin before people could buy it on exchanges. Exactly. Yeah. How early it was. It's yeah. It's like literally like um. Because imagine this is before. This is when to be feminist, to say it out loud as a girl was not like every, like everyone's feminist now. Every TV show is feminist. You know what I mean? Like back then it was like still a little bit edgy to say it. Yeah. Like, or imagine, imagine like gay marriage yeah. wasn't legal. No, no, like, gay, yeah, I remember. Gay marriage wasn't legal yet. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like, girls wouldn't like, girls typically don't like doing things that no other girls are doing. Exactly. Yeah. No, I remember this. I so remember during that. Like- that early that first obama re-election yeah. era it was just east it was easy money yeah i remember this i had my lefty days too in high school mm-hmm. but i just wasn't posting through them yeah yeah back then I, I was also like such a fucking i wasn't an incel uh but i was not like <laughs> i was i was on some like deep fucking i was on my mis- mis- misanthrope uh arc reading like that's when i was reading all like in, like now like people are like oh wow you've read a lot of philosophy it's like yeah because i used to just like sit in my room and be edgelord and read philosophy and then like spit game in facebook dm see dude i i purely <laughs> like optimize the system i never fucking read any of that shit that i smart. read enough synopses and i read enough uh like the big accounts that would cite the common passages from everything like i knew all of those so like i could pretend mm-hmm. like i did it but like i did it's exactly the same as i am now right like actual knowledge zero bullshitting ability <laughs> 10 million well back then i was like well it's also similar to like i did now but i had like a super fucking 
uh, I don't want to say the name because you can probably still Google it. I had like a super like fucking esoteric blog about like philosophy and the internet that I would like write to that no one read. And then <laughs> just like read <laughs> fucking dense ass books all day and just be yes, angry and you depressed. Should, like just recycle those like and just. I should, but they're not good. They're not good. To your Substack. They're not good. There's a really good low. There's a really low market for like male theory cells. I feel. Yeah, no one cares about a theory cell. Um, now, like, maybe all of you the, should uh, give them to me, and I will recycle them into a Substack. Mm, and actually, you have of actually, maybe. Uh, Murray, I I need to ask specifically you about your posting and like because you you basically just like five x your follower account. What sort of like A B testing is your brain naturally telling you to run on like uh figuring out like what your followers like and stuff? Because like you know every time I gain a lot, I have to like shotgun a bunch of random content and see like what are my new followers like what do they want to see what do they hate what what do they respond positively to etc and i know you've got to be doing this um well what my brain naturally wants to do is just like go back to my normal posting style <laughs> like yeah i'm just like i'm just like ugh, maybe i'll just like start posting like very low level spiritual posts like that's gonna make you get bigger my feelings you could you could become like the marianne wilson williamson like, of of this uh this corner honestly what i'm what i'm probably just gonna do is like continue to write like machiavellian threads on on like how to get what you want or to get to get things through tricky means um and yeah, that'll work. That'll, but like the thing is, if you have to, if you um don't feel the uh, passion, if you feel like you got to do it, it won't, it might not uh keep appealing to you. Yeah. I am passionate about getting things through tricky tricky means. Oh, perfect. Then. It is definitely one of my passions. This this is like specifically why I liked Marie from the beginning. <laughs> she she yeah. is actually more really okay bo- Yeah, both of us were very uh <laughs> pragmatic about our little social climbing. I just like I. I do think that there's morals. I think people moralize things too much. So I do like looking, I like looking at things through like an amoral standpoint for sure. Like stealing someone else's boyfriend. Like I don't, I think people moralize that a lot and they got really emotionally triggered. That that one was a super funny outrage because like probably 80% of the girls that I know have done that explicitly at some point in their lives but none of them would ever admit that they've done it mm-hmm. or none of them think of what they did as that. But like, mm-hmm. if you look at the things that you outline in that thread, like all of these specific approaches to take, like mm-hmm. they explicitly oh, yeah. did each and every one of those with some guy. Yeah. I basically don't know a girl who hasn't done those things in your thread, which is definitely what makes it like uh catch fire. Cause right, it's like, like that's, that's why people got a little bit. Cause I mean, you're not supposed to, uh, you're not supposed to say like the female social maneuvering things, right? Because they, they, they want to pretend like they're all like, right. They, they prefer yeah. to be nice in the same way that it's like, if you talk about the way that girls are much, much, much more attracted to you when you have a girlfriend yourself, they all like scream and bleed and say like, no, you fucking evil racist incel. But like every guy who's ever not had a girlfriend and had a girlfriend has experienced this phenomenon. Yeah. You get no attention when you're single. They're like, why are you single? Yeah. What is wrong with you? Yeah. I think, and it, but if you are single and there's like, like the part, if you're like very flirtatious, so like there's always girls around you, you start to get the same benefit of having a girlfriend. Cause then they're like, cause then it's like, uh, I don't know. It's like a weird, it's a more of a game theory thing, but yeah. I think a lot of people got really angry at the second part of that tweet, which was like, which was, yeah, like everyone knows that all the single guys are single because there's something wrong with them. <laughs> oh yeah. That's, that's of, the male bait. That's the male bait. Yeah. A lot of people DM'd me and a lot of guys DM'd me and they're like, I am here to prove to you that single men are not all bad <laughs> <laughs> it's a coincidence that i'm well, single <laughs> you know, i'm single is- by choice why would you think that like me and my friends like i have really cool friends and we're all single because we want to be single and we're working on ourselves I, right dude, did you get people telling you about how many boats they have i don't know why that that happened to me so many times but like multiple people were like flexing their boats on me as like what? the the worth that's crazy to me because no one ever flexes like how rich they are to me Really? Yeah, no, you're not, no, you're not no, utilizing no. your. You, you're, well, you're not utilizing Marie, there your may be a reason race. though that maybe maybe all of these people DMing you, uh, and because I've I've noticed this also too is people when they reply to me they have boats when they DM me they don't have boats. So yeah, you're I not think, responding to replies. So yeah, 
Well, I think there's I think there is a uh, an understanding that if you DM somebody, the conversation could potentially take a level of realness and uh, like connectedness oh, yeah. in which they would be able to like tell that you don't have boats. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> fair enough. Right. Fair. Like if this is a guy who's coming to Marie trying to say like. I'm trying to court you. I think you're beautiful. Like, I wish we could spend our whole life together. Uh, and then he says he has eight boats. And then, like, two weeks into talking, they meet up. And she's like, where's your boats? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, ah, oh, <laughs> about the boats. Yeah, that's, that's true. You can, you can fake the funk on the timeline. In the DMs, you got to come with the, the real shit. Yep. You got to come with the emotional connection. It's like, listen, I'm trying to get in your, I'm trying to massage your soul. It's a big game. Yeah. I think, though, that in in terms of basically doing uh, incel rhetoric with, like, less of a black-pilled tone. That's what I was doing for that, – that was, like, my bit. But the thing you're is still, – You're still quite black. I'm still black so yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm, like, come, <laughs> I'm talking about, like, coming from Marie, coming from a girl, and any girl, really, generally, uh, would be fine. But I think – I feel like you could take Marie my – Marie, I feel like if you, you could take my old posts that when I was cynical and write them like a girl, it would probably blow up. Because uh, even the girls were like, these are funny, but they would just get mad at me. But half the point was to get, get girls mad so they DM me and then I can like spit game and meet them. Yeah, you can, that was you like, can <laughs> talk them down from the edge. Exactly. That was always my, my thing. It's just like get a, get a few girls triggered so they DM me. Like, why would you say this? <laughs> then you have an, a new yeah. girlfriend well i think the thing about the incel rhetoric is that a lot of it is right and it rings or it hits upon like true realities and people love like reading the truth and if you're just a normal person on normie twitter these might be things that you have never heard before um or you haven't heard said on the internet by a person you think is cool um yeah i, I think uh like a Wait. The, the main the main downside to the incel rhetoric, right? And we've we've all talked about this before, but it's basically just that like everyone, uh, you know, like if you believe in the incel rhetoric, it's basically saying like there are haves and have nots in the male world, mm-hmm. and the reason that the incel rhetoric sucks is because the guys are saying there are haves and have nots, yeah. and I am a have not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I am a fucking loser, and it's over. It makes it sad. It makes yes, it, it makes it sad. Yes, it makes it sad, and like then your empathy kicks in but if if it's a girl saying it then you're maybe some other emotion kicks in like anger or like yes it makes, <laughs> you, it makes you guys you angry, really see angry it as a guy on the other side either like i mean you can but it's like very not conducive to selling things because if you're a guy and you say there are haves and have nots and i am a have and if you aren't a have then there's nothing you can buy there's no product i can sell you that will fix <laughs> you you're fucked you're busted you're broken forever it's over and you're not going to make it unless you buy my my action my cheaper fucking uh but you, you can't like that's, if, like if the, that's what um like that's what is... the lambros do that's the lambros thing you're a fucking no, they, they, you're say, they say basically like if <laughs> you're going to sell a program you have to leave there being a possibility for self improvement when like yes. realistically i don't know how much like i think you can i can i think you can get to the end point faster but like the idea that somebody's going to like do some sort of limit breaking and go beyond who they had the destiny to be like i don't know dude i haven't really seen too much of this if we're gonna be honest. yeah it's a good well the thing is you need a, a, to to like break out of your trajectory you need like a fundamentally like, I don't know, like a fu- like a, a major shift for your. You also you to need change. to get whacked. Yeah, you need to get whacked. Yeah, like you need to like get in a car accident. You need to fucking someone needs to die. Like you need something serious to like you need to do like a mega dose of some kind of drug that fucks your whole like frame of reference. Like you need to do something major. Otherwise, you're not going to change your trajectory. Honestly, you just- I don't really feel like I've had. I feel like I've had a bunch of like failure arcs in my life like i've had like it's very cyclical it just keeps going and going well life is all about <laughs> failures and then you like build on your failures and you get better that's just that's a, you're supposed to fail a lot the, the thing they never tell you about rich people in fact uh if you ever talk to rich people they all have the same more or less the same stories unless they were born rich it's uh i made money i lost it all everyone left me i made money again i lost it all everyone left me it's just that this time i figured out how to not lose it this time but I made it like like they lost it all like several times over, and then I eventually remember, you're like, how do I not lose it when I make it this time? I read the the like Wikipedia page of the guy who made like the my pillow thing or something, and it was mm-hmm. literally him creating and then bankrupting like thirty <laughs> consecutive businesses in a row before he like made millions and millions of dollars selling pillows. Yeah, it was oh, that's so a, fucking inspirational. The guy who made um um ramen like top ramen, 
he made like three different like multi like he made like a bank he like made like he was like a salt miner like he had like he, like he did a bunch of things and then he went to jail for like white collar crime unironically and he was in jail and was like or maybe tax evasion something like that and he was just like wow it would be really cool if like people in prison had like really cheap food that's like high in salt or whatever so that's like keeps their hunger or whatever and then he made top ramen and became a billionaire fuck yeah, so it's just like, just keep fucking up. And then eventually, if you don't stop fucking up, you'll just get there. You know, have, have you looked at the ingredients for Top Ramen since college, by the way? No, I actually have one in it's, here. It's literally just canola oil and enriched white bleached flour. Oh, yeah, that's... that makes sense. That makes sense, yeah. <laughs> I use it as like, I shouldn't even fucking eat it. But I like the fact that I could put um, my leftover meat and like bone broth and then just have like a noodle in there. And it's just like, it makes me feel like I'm not eating like beef beef soup. Yeah. But it is beef soup anyway. But I never, I don't like their package, their 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 fucking little broth thing in there. Yeah, it's bad. But the noodles are shit too. Whatever, it's all shit. But you never. But sometimes you gotta live life on the edge. I think that like eating ramen for four years in college made me very sick. Like I had a lot of very strange health problems at the end of college that have just gone away. Well, you're not supposed to actually eat ramen for four years. I was. Wait, well, you did that? Say, did you actually do that? Because <laughs> yeah. I don't think you're supposed this, to do this that. Is a, this is a thing okay, that happened well, to me in college. We'll go so, for it. So here's what the situation at my college is that you couldn't have a kitchen. Like you had to live in the student housing because the town was so small and there was nowhere else to live. And so mm-hmm. I lived in student housing and there was like no way for me to cook for myself for all four years mm, of college. Okay. So honestly, by the end of college, if you do that, you are a seriously developmentally stunted person. And okay. some people like made it out of that like worse than others. Like, so I was like fine because I knew how to cook from my family. But there's a lot of people who leave the college that I went to like not knowing how to do any, like anything for themselves because they've been living in a dorm for four years. So it's a oh, bad yeah, situation. Not... And I did eat a lot of ramen and popcorn. Oh yeah, no, that would, that'd be brutal. I, I, uh, oh no, you didn't, you didn't switch it up to like bagel bites or something because I, I used to eat ramen and bagel bites. That was like my freshman year thing. At the end. I did have a roommate with a fridge, so I used her fridge and I had corn dogs. <laughs> oh my god! I got a big box of corn dogs and would my fourth, the, corn the dogs. fourth year, you guess when you got the fridge? Yep. That's we tough. No, we fridges. had a freezer. I had a fridge all four years, but like we had a freezer, so I had the fridge oh, okay. and the corn dogs. College was like the specific time when I learned that uh, all of the health shit about like fat people are fat because of poverty was just like absolute bullshit. Because I would go to the store and say, like, what is the cheapest possible food that I could buy? And it was always, like, tilapia or, like, chicken and <laughs> rice and beans. Mm-hmm. And yeah, then everyone, like, yeah. everyone, everyone who was fat would come back with, like, Lunchables or something. <laughs> like, some yeah. just, like, grotesque abomination. And uh, I would spend, like, $50 a week. And they would spend, like, $200 a week. And I would be beautiful and jacked, and they would just be like grotesque legume people. If you if you get like actual like pr- essentially like pre made food or like food that's like easily prepared in like a microwave, then yeah, that's when you get the the shitty whatever outcomes. Yeah. But like the cheapest things, of course, are like raw ingredients. I used to like I tried to get um so actually I tried to get food stamps. My mom wouldn't let me um because you can, I found out you can get food stamps for like as a college student. And food stamps were, thanks to Obama, were extended to like lamb and shit. Like I was, <laughs> you could get like steak and stuff. And I was like, I, I was like, mom, can you please let me get food stamps? And she's like, I did not come out of the proverb. I didn't come out of poverty so that you could get food stamps. It was like really upsetting. But <laughs> in New York City, you can get, you can use your food stamps at the farmer's market and they are worth double at the farmer's market. Yeah. There's like, there's like serious food stamp incentives. Like they have like, they jacked the shit up. Like you can get like free range all kinds of shit and then my mom just wasn't letting it happen i was like mom i'm broke and i mean i'm, I'm making i'm living fine i'm making like chickpeas and spinach or whatever the fuck i was eating but i'm like i can get lamb like i don't think you understand yeah you have to let go of your middle class pride and get on food stamps yeah honestly on, on ironically if you're broke and you're like 18 or 19 listening to this you should get on food stamps because that shit is there's weird. absolutely no reason my tax dollars are paying for you to get on food stamps yeah that i if I could do it again because I would have eaten so much better. Like, I mean, I, I wasn't, I was a vegetarian and I was so like, I was like thin anyway. I was eating just like bags of spinach.